Hello again, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, you saw that title really correctly, and you're going to see more reviews from me and with my friends, Lord Lurod and Emmy and Whedon, and the Kicks to the Rounds, everybody in there, and also, also, because you know why? Because this motherfucking show was just so great. I will not tell you bit by bit of the story because that's a spoiler, and I don't want to spoil the show because it's just, just that great. And yes, I'm wearing glasses, not because I'm blind, because these are awesome, and pretty much this show was so awesome, my eyes are just blinding of awesomeness. So, I digress. Let's just jump into the show real quickly so I can go to bed very, very soon. So I'm going to deal with all the other nonsense in the morning. Well, I'm going to still deal with the nonsense in the morning, but, you know, so, yeah. Anyways, yeah, let's start with the basics of all basics. The show starts off, again, I'm not going to tell you everything, so I'm going to be very much saying with my own point of view. The show starts off really strong. It was great. The first episode gets you hooked. It's just that damn good. And then the stories, the characters become so likable. And you love all the characters. You love the story. No fact, some people can say it's the clinch, which is fine. But it's more than that. You get both sides of the story, which is both amazing. And most shows don't do it. Not even comic book shows. Not even drama-like shows do this. And so it's just so awesome how the show went down. It was just, I'm sorry. I'm just so flabbergasted because I just got done watching it myself. And, um, damn, I don't know what to say after that because there's just so much. And the episodes don't feel long. It really doesn't feel long. It's like, wait, it's already over? What happened? What, what, what happened? Because I watched this really early. And I got done around, well, pretty much the morning now, which is 12. Well, it's 12.45 right now on my TV. But that's another long story, too. But, again, it's, man, it was so damn good. But one thing that sells the show the most is Charles Cox and Vincent, and let me say his name up really quickly. Oh, God. Vincent D. O'Frail. Hope I said that name right, because I'm going to look it up again. Onofrio. Onofrio. Vincent Onofrio and Charles Cox steal the show every single second, every single time, because... You, I cannot kid you not, because these characters were just great. They were not just, oh, we got these characters, who cares? No, no, no. They got some real characters, because it felt like it was realistic type superhero nonsense, like we see in the Avengers, like we see in Captain America Winter Soldier, like we see in Iron Man. Like this was this, that was this, this was the right tone, the right greedy type moment. Unlike these shows like Arrow, unlike shows like Gotham, unlike shows like um, more other bullshit um, superhero shows out there. This show knows what it's doing. It's taking all the materials from Stan Lee's comic books and a little bit of Frank Miller's comic books. Only some, not all, thank you, God. And it get, it becomes more and more, oh my God, oh my God. And if you're, if you're a comic book fan like me, you get treated to more and more goodies, all these hints, all these Easter eggs. It's like, damn. Because I know this is so easily, but I, myself, I need to just check up on the research behind it. Who's playing this character? What type? What type of um, story are they going to? And oh my god, I was just blown away how the show itself pretty much said like, "Fuck it, we're gonna use all types of story materials from the comic books to this show." And I'm sorry, I got I got pretty much spoiled. I got spoiled so bad that this show was so damn good. So I'm very hyped up for Luke Cage, Jessica Jones, and, and Iron Fist, which is all going to lead up to drum roll, please, Earth Defenders. Wow, I don't want to say on that one, folks, because that's going to be so amazing to just witness how great it all is. And Marvel knows what they're doing. They've hired some really interesting writers, hired really good directors, screenplay writers, um, stuntmans. And trust me, there's a lot of stunt work in this goddamn show. It's like, damn. Because the action scenes are really brutal and just... This is the point where Batman and Arrow cannot go. This is pretty much where Captain, well, Captain America can go that route, but I'll explain that later on. This is where the route that Iron Man, Thor, and most comic book series on both Marvel and DC cannot go. But Daredevil, he's willing to take that path if necessary. But he's not a big fan of like killing by, of course, in the comic books too, he's not a big fan of killing people. But he does some really graphic stuff that I can't tell you because it's just, it's just that good. And um, what made it more interesting is because 
Daredevil, again, he can be gritty. He can be grueling and gritty. That's what makes his character so interesting, so cool. But at the same time, he's not a wannabe. He's not trying to pretend like, oh, I got a moral code and blah, 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 blah. He knows why he can't kill. Because he don't be end up like the people. And yes, you can say it for Batman itself, but Batman in the earlier years, or well, not early, but later years, like the Dark Knight trilogy, it was complete other bullshit. Like, dude, who cares about them? Not going to be missed. But in Daredevil's Hell's Kitchen, taking out a bad guy himself, like, I'm not going to say who the big bad, but you kind of know who the big bad is. You're going to pretty much give a, he's going to be a martyr. He's going to be like that big beacon of like hope for all types of criminals out there. And the power behind um, William Fisk, a.k.a. Kingpin, it holds no bounds. It was just so amazing how it was all played out. And you would say like, damn, really? Really? Where did he get, where did he find this at? Where did he find this at? You know, because it's hard for you to believe he got so much power in his own hand. But you got to remember, Hell's Kitchen is his home as well, just like Daredevil's. And he knows ins and outs as well. And how he fights people, it's very brutal. I love it too, because he's not just fat. He's actually full of muscle. Just like in the comic books, he is full of muscle. He's like a sumo wrestler, really. And so the creators behind it did a lot of great jobs. Like, okay, no offense to the heavy stick character. Do not play him as a fat guy. Play him as like a really strong, muscular sumo wrestler, which he was. And it was really done perfectly well. And um, again, he has that fear that no one in, in, like in, t in TV shows actually has. He has that real fear that people will feel like, oh, no, no, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. And then when he has like cronies all around the globe, well, not around the globe, but you know what I mean, in Hell's Kitchen, you barely see it coming like, what the? What? I mean, seriously, we should already know. We should pretty much should catch on to who's good, who's bad nonsense. But this is something that we, the, the writers don't pretty much build up. They just give you like, here, here's that guy who's crooked. Here's this one guy who's crooked. Here's she, he, whatever. And like, what? 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 Because it's for me saying this, it doesn't give it justice. Because when you see how far his power goes, you'd be like, damn. This mofo is too damn powerful at times, which it is. But that was so perfect, though. It was just like the comic book character, unlike that movie, which we're not going to talk about because I don't remember it. He has so much power in Hell's Kitchen, it's hard to pretty much topple him. You got to go all the way just trying to fight him, fight the forces. <laughs> uh, oh, Emmy, you're too great. Anyways, <laughs> what is up? is that this show is too damn good. And um, at the ending episode, oh, God. It's just the comic book fans' wet dream come to life. And I can't say much more because I got to keep it... But, again, supporting characters within the show are great, too. You love the supporting characters. And there's something really magical behind the main characters and, and supporting characters is that you get to know who they are. You get a backstory. You get X, Y, and Z. But you don't really get like the full story why they're helping or not helping, whatever the case may be. Because you kind of understand that the whole human aspect behind it. There's a human aspect behind the show. And that is one thing that makes it so awesome. There is a human aspect. More realistic than Arrow and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Because Arrow, I know Arrow has done some good things. And it's true, he has done some good things. But Here's the big problem behind Arrow. It's cheesy, I get that, but it's not. It's not real. It's not pretty much. It's not really relatable. It's not like how. Why should I care about this fucker? Why should I do this and that? Right. You don't really care for Oliver whatso fucking ever. I don't care about him because he's just a rich prick. But that's another long story too. But at the same time, I can't really identify myself as Oliver and his struggles, or his his friends or comrades, or whatever it can be. Um. Uh, Matt Murdock, Matthew Murdock, that is, I can identify his struggles as a person with a disability. I can identify, well, not because of the glass, but I can, I can see myself, but that's another long story, is that when he goes through the struggles, you see his struggles all the way up from child to adulthood. And that was pretty much morally, that was the most welcome gift to the viewers than anything else out there, because we don't know who this character is. Well, I know who he is, but as a viewer, I don't know who he is. What is his character? Why should I care about him? Why? 
and it gives you a great reason. And you can tell that this character has faced a lot of ups and ups and ups and uh, ups and down battles. And trust me, he goes through a lot of battles. And whew, those fight scenes are just. I know I already said the, the stunt scenes and everything else, but oh fuck, it just gets great. It really does get great. And then you learn more about Daredevil and his skills. And it's really because it's more interesting as time goes on. And you get backstories on his friends. It was like, what? It comes, that was really good too. And the best of all the uh, um, backstories is the Kingpin. I can't tell you why, because it mimics uh, pretty much the storytelling itself. Because it was told you like pretty much 1% of his own backstory, but it was pretty much the most needed backstory of all time. And, and let, me tell you, let me tell you this now, folks. I was very sympathetic for this character. I really feel bad for him because what he went through as a child was like, damn. And it's good, it makes that case proven that monsters are not born. They're made. And so what I saw here was basically reality itself. It wasn't just made up bullshit. It was reality itself. And what the crime was, it was very like, damn, damn. And the war that goes in Hell's Kitchen I can't tell you even more, folks, because it just gets... I'm sorry I got to repeat the same things over and over again, but at the same time, you're going to be rooting for Daredevil and Kingpin at the same time because they are like, they're all likable characters. You all like for who they are. And supporting characters, too, who has something to lose, something to gain. You get to fill in behind all these characters. They're not just cardboard cutouts of comic book-like characters. They're not just, oh, we're moping because of moping, moping, moping. No, 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 no. No, not because of that bullshit. No, no. They give you a good reason why you should care about these characters, and it gives you a good reason why Matt Murdock can't really get into a, a pretty much a full-on, you know, love affair, or whatever, because he is fighting the urban, urban gang wars, urban crime syndicate, all that type of stuff, and they don't play around. Super villains is one thing, but when you mess with the with the crime underworld, oh yeah, they will come after your ass. You can say the same thing for Batman as well, but Batman's characters and Batman's all that surroundings. It didn't feel relatable. I didn't really feel I could relate to this character because he's rich and he has money and he's pretty much fucking crazy. Okay, all these superheroes are fucking crazy. But they put they put more better spin on it. The reason why I could relate to Captain America is because I'm not that strong. I'm not that muscular, whatever the case may be. And he always said he always said like, he always fight. He wants he wants to fight the bullies. He doesn't matter who they are. He wants to fight the bullies. And that was really interesting. But at the end of the day, he was still the same person when he got his powers. And he still fought for the same goals he had in mind. And how he pretty much never gives up on, he never gives up on people or his friends or family, that does speak volumes towards me. That comes like a really interesting character who I really much like and pretty much, he's not real, but I respect him still. And I don't really see race behind Captain America. I see he's just a, a great beacon symbol that America is trying to be nowadays, but it's not. And Daredevil, He's pretty much an upstanding guy, but he has to play that dark roles. He has to go to that extra limit. He doesn't do that whole bullshit like Batman does, like, oh, I have no limits, I have no blah, 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 blah. Like, no, stop that bullshit. Matt, Matt Murdock explains why he can't go to that extra level because he was trained by a person who I can't tell you who was pretty much all badass. But at the same time, it's just, there's just so many secrets and bounds behind it. It's just great. So there's one there's one thing I don't like. When like some good shit happens, it goes off screen sometimes. Sometimes. It only happened in two episodes, but I'm not gonna tell you what the episodes are. It happens off screen sometimes, but you get over you overlook that very easily because the things that happen off scene, which could have been badass to see, but they're backed up by strong storytelling. They're backed up by strong aftermaths that most shows of all types don't have nowadays. And I really cannot wait for the other uh, other superheroes to come on Netflix because Marvel did something really great again. Marvel being planning this out, and I see how they do well in planning. And um, what else can I say, folks? I said I love this show. It's really amazing. It makes me spoil. Like, man, why should I watch Shield again? Wait, why should I watch Arrow again? Wait, why should I watch Flash? I don't have enough. I don't have any good reasons either. Like, I have no reasons. Like, now I got no reasons. No, I got no reason. No, because there's no filler. There's no fucking filler of bullshit that didn't go through every single second. Like, okay, whatever, stereotype, 
left, right, left, right. I don't give a fuck. People in this world of the Daredevil universe, or pretty much Marvel universe it is, they're not, in a way, stereotypes. There's a, in a way, you can actually understand their struggles. You can understand why they're doing this X, Y, and Z. And you want to hate the villains, but for some odd reason, you like the villains. You want to see more of them. You want, you want to root for them, too, when they get those fine, awesome moments. And trust me, there is one shocking moment in the, in the show itself. It was like, girl. It makes The Undertaker look like a, look like a pretty much a mosquito in, in large perspectives. Because what this part does, it has large volumes, not just for the characters, but the, the world in Hell's Kitchen. And The Undertaker was just in Starling City. No one gave a two flying fucks for Starling City's urban areas, and no one did. It's still the same piece of shit as ever. But that's another long story, too. Um, again, it has that flavor of just being, you're in New York City. And Hell's Kitchen is real, by the way, if you guys didn't know that. And I don't know, I don't keep repeating myself over and over again, but fuck it, you know? It's just a great damn show that I don't give a fuck because it is a great show. You should watch it. Why are you listening to me? Watch the damn show. It's a must watch. You already know it's a must watch. So why are you watching me? Why? You, why? Go watch the show, please. Watch it. And yes, you hear that ringing sound? That means it's true. All that ringing sound you hear? All that good shit. So, see what I mean? You see what I mean? You see what I mean? I'm just saying the truth, folks. Stop watching my videos. Watch Daredevil all the way through because you get very addictive. And you pretty much can't tell if like time flies by so quick. It's like, wait, what? Time flies by? No! And um, very quickly, very, very quickly, the biggest plus behind this show is that this show has a fucking main story and an arc and an end game, unlike other shows in Netflix, like House of Cards and Orange is the New Black. They do not have an end game. They do not have a main arc. They don't have a main why they're doing this, X, Y, and Z. No, they just do random shit because, oh, this could be an interesting storytelling. It has no big effect. It's all bullshit. With Daredevil, there is a main arc. There is an end game. There is more stories to come. And trust me, folks, when I tell you this, this is pretty much the best Netflix shows ever. Fuck that House of Cards. Fuck that Orange New Black. I'm sorry, because I don't hate the shows, but I hate how they don't have a main arc, you know? But that's a, that's me. For, that's, that's all I have to say. Watch the show. It's, great. it's a great show. Daredevil is a must-watch. Go watch it. And I'm going to enjoy my night and get some sleep. And you just watched the show of Isaiah Zone. I'm leaving it. And I'm scratching my nose because it itches. And you hear that ringing sound because, you know, I'm awesome. That means I'm getting a lot of page backs. <laughs> okay, I'm not funny. Whatever. But, again, do keep it locked and loaded because I will be back on the Geeks of the Rounds or Lords of Boom or with Oso and Any. Yes. <laughs> But anyways, folks, I have been your host. I ask me, Isaiah, you're leaving the zone. And I, yes, I've been the Lord of Logic. And yes, that sign just says below, you got knocked the fuck out. Yes, you're going to keep saying that and all throughout the whole damn show of Daredevil. And I've been your host, Isaiah, and I'm leaving it. And I'll be back. Because you got to keep it locked on for me. Because I'll always be back. Ha! Uh, you know I'm going to talk shit anyways, Amy. Be quiet over there. I'm trying to end the show. See? You see what I mean, folks? I got groupies all the time. You know, I got lady groupies. They want to say, you can't talk shit about my show. Yeah, I know. You want to be on the show because you like being on my show. Anyways, folks, yes, I've been your host. I'll catch you guys later. And as always, keep locked it, loaded, and more for me because I'll be back. And I just mess it up. I don't give a fuck. Well, <laughs>